Oh, I wanted to uh, share something that we discussed yesterday. It's a Brene Brown quote. Uh, wholehearted living. Wholehearted living is about engaging in our lives from a place of worthiness. It means cultivating the courage, compassion, and connection to wake up in the morning and think, no matter what gets done, and no matter how much is left undone, I am enough. It's going to bed at night thinking, yes, I am imperfect and vulnerable, and sometimes afraid. But that doesn't change the truth that I'm also brave and worthy of love and belonging. Wholehearted living is not a one-time choice. It's a process. In fact, I believe it's the journey of a lifetime. That is what I am calling our community into. It's to wholehearted living. Now, I, I have this whole talk about uh, our hair on fire, and um, I'm going to forgo that today, and we're going to have a heart-to-heart. -heart and, uh, and the Spirit is a really... Like I could just feel it, and I, uh, I don't want to have a loving conversation with you. But first, have you heard about the judge and the prisoner's conversation? <laughs> no. <laughs> it was Christmas, because you know we're coming up on that season. And the judge was in a merry mood, and he asked the prisoner, what are you charged with? And the prisoner replied, Christmas shopping early. <laughs> That's no offense, said the judge. How early did you stop, start shopping? The prisoner replied, before the store opened. <laughs> oh, he needs to come to the center. <laughs> did it land? Come on, I'm trying, I'm trying. Uh, we are going to stick with the topic of hair on fire because this is what I find, uh, how God has placed this. Uh, my higher self, your intuitive self, we're all one. There's one and one reality, and that one reality is expressing through each of us. And then we have our conditioning, our lives, our humanness, our nature. And we are all uh, independently beautiful, independently imperfect, independently skilled and talented in different ways. And we also independently get hurt in different ways. We independently receive information in different ways. We independently uh, hear something and think about it and distort it in different ways, depending on our conditioning, what's happened to us, how we've come about it. Sue introduced us to this idea yesterday of the brain, and the brain's job is to just to create a story about everything. And most of us listen to that more than we listen to the guidance of the divine because we've been living from that space for a long, long time. And so my teacher recently said to me, you can stop now. And I thought, well, that's interesting. Okay, I'll stop. And he's like, no, Tracy, I really want you to be still and hear these words. You can stop now. And it didn't dawn on me till a few days later because Tracy's personality takes information in. She thinks she knows for a little while, and then she's driving and uh, usually having a conversation with myself. And I'll go, oh, 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 you can, you can stop now. Stop thinking. Stop overthinking. Now, this is a very interesting thing because the word stop implies you have control over it. You don't. What you do have control over is awareness and what you give attention to. So once we start the process of recognizing our brain is co convincing of us, us of a story, which by the way may or may not be true, depending on your view of life, your lens, how you see things, how you interpret things, um, we then start to give attention to our thinking in our brain and the story grows. And then we bring new characters in. Have you ever been driving along and you're like talking to someone that isn't even in the car with you? Right? And I, I do this with my kids all the time. I'm like, duh, 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 duh. and then all of a sudden, I am like halfway to my point, don't even know how I got there. It's scary to drive that way because you're having this conversation. This is the nature of our brains. And because of this nature, we can get our hair on fire really, really quickly. And, uh, and I don't know about you, but 
I, I can do that. I, I am, uh, you know, we're all works in progress. We're all striving on the path. We're all trying to do uh, growth and consciousness, do better, be better, and be more loving. You wouldn't be here in this type of center if that wasn't the case for you. Now, some of us, uh, you know, take classes. Some of us really strive. And what the most important thing is to know that w even when your hair on fire, your hair's on fire, God is right there. He has not abandoned that part of yourself. That essence is you. It cannot leave you. It cannot forsake you. It cannot go away. When you lose a job, it cannot not be there. When you're going through a divorce, it cannot not be there. When you don't have enough money, it cannot not be there. So what we give our attention to in these moments of what we call trouble is really directing the energy of law and telling it what you wish to receive more of. And I don't know about you, but I want more love. I want more um, uh, exchange of uh, compassion and, and I want to know myself greater so that when I'm uh, with you, I can be the mirror of that love. We did a values exercise yesterday and it was a long and some, for some of us very challenging us overthinkers. And I uh, recognize that the value of knowing your value is really important because we, can, we, we all have values and we are moving and breathing and, and uh, making our decisions based on what those are, whether you are consciously aware of them or not. And so we started with, I don't know, 152 words. Then we had to make it into like four groups of six or something. And then we had to narrow down. And with each choice of narrowing down, you could see the squeeze. Ooh, you're putting me in a box. <laughs> and really what it was just trying to show us is how we make a choice, how we interact with others, what's important to us. It's important to know what's important to you. And it's important to, to understand that that is valid and that no one can take that away from you. And even if they don't agree with it, you still have the right to act and move and breathe and feel as you are. And that is called self-acceptance. So we were, we were driving up yesterday and uh, I got up in the morning and I'm like, I'm not gonna be late. I'm gonna be on time, put Luke in the car. Sue's a very on time person. I'm not gonna be the one to make her late. Cause okay, y'all know Trace's personality is not always the one that's on time. I get there in time, but I'm not always on time. Other people's time. My time's perfect. <laughs> Did you hear that? My time's perfect. Uh, so um, I can't find my glasses. So I say to Bill, you packed my other set of glasses. And I don't know where you put them, but where are they? And he's like, I don't know, that was a week ago. And I, was, I can't find my glasses. I'm looking, you know. You can never find anything when your hair is on fire ever, <laughs> including your highest and utmost self, ever. So I, uh, he's like, oh, go look in the eyeglass case in the van. And I'm like, why would they be in there? It's hot outside, you're trying to melt my glasses. And I go out there and my old glasses are in there. And I'm like, fine, that's good enough. And then I'm in the car and we're driving, we get to the end of my street and Luke, he goes, I want my baba. And I'm like, wah! <laughs> and Luke goes, you a bear? And I'm like, yes! <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I think I scared him. And, um, and I'm in this total resistance to the idea that I have formulated of what I already cast as what other people are going to think if I'm not where they need me to be when they need me to be there. And that Sue is going to be like, oh, that Tracy, man, I should have drove myself, you know. These stories are formulating. And I share this because I'm a person and I know that it happens to you because it's the same uh, thing that we share other than our highest self is our human experience. So my hair is on fire, then we get there and you know, we're driving along and we're like, oh, actually we're making good time. And then I turn to Luke and I go, sorry, I was a bear because everything's really going well. And I made that whole story up and Luke goes, it's okay, Nana, you're my favorite. I was like, oh. Uh, oh, there's nothing like a validation of a two-year-old. Because um, later that night, he said, you're not my favorite. <laughs> uh, so you learn real quickly that they have their favorites. But, um, so my hair is on fire, and God, sa God says, Sue, Sue is God. God says to me, stop. Just stop. Just stop right now. 
you are enough, there is enough, there's enough time, there's enough gas, there's enough food, there's enough money, there's enough everything, and more importantly, you are enough. And even in your imperfections, God is right there. Just because Tracy doesn't get everything done, doesn't get everything done right, makes mistakes, and by the way, does things really great sometimes too, and is the most loving, compassionate, heartfelt person that, that I've met. And, and I, I'm looking at her going, are you talking about me? And, um, and she's like, let's just make the drive, and l let's just hold this meeting in the highest place possible, and let's just let spirit unfold it. So we, we're making great time. And we get to Quarters Junction and Lukey says, I want French fries. And I'm like, nobody makes fries, like I said, at nine in the morning. And so Sue goes, I'm gonna get out. And so she gets, goes into McDonald's and I get Luke out and we go in and she's like, they're making fries. I'm like, how'd you do that? <laughs> she's like, I asked. <laughs> uh, so Luke got his French fries, we get in the car, we're driving and I see Prescott that way. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's the way I always go. And then I get to Arcasante Road and Prescott, and I am very directional illiterate. You do not want to put me in charge of reading the map or driving. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh yeah, Arcasante Road. And then I'm driving, I'm like, oh, did we get, wait, where are we? This does not look familiar. And she's like, I don't know, we didn't turn the GPS on. <laughs> and then we realize that we're having this really in-depth conversation. And the story started. Oh my God, I'm gonna be late. People are there early. We, you wanted to get set up. You really asked me, let's be early. And I'm like, I've disappointed you. And she's like, yeah, I do that a lot too. And I go, I feel so silly. And she's like, yeah, that's all right. And I go, oh man, you know my community, they, they, uh, they love me, but I, I don't want them to think. She's like, they're, they're thinking and it's none of your business. And I was like, oh, well, I really want to make it my business, you know? <laughs> and I want to make it all okay, and I want you to think that I'm perfect, and that I do things well, and that I don't make mistakes, and none of that's true. I'm here to tell the truth. I had a heart awakening uh, recently with my friend, Glory G, and I recognize the person that I'm lying to the most is myself. And when my hair is on fire, I am stuck in Tracy, the story, the lie, Clay, can you bring that uh, slide back up that Sandy read our affirmation for me? And, um, and it's not the lie like, Mom, I went to the, my friend's house, but I was at the bar. That's not the lie I'm talking about. The lie that I'm talking about is um, um, being honest about, uh, hey, I'm doing my best. Um, what you said hurt my feelings or, hey, that choice didn't really make me happy. I love you, but it didn't really make me happy. Or, hey, you're doing a great job, Tracy, and saying, thanks, because some days I don't feel like I am. And we all have these moments, don't we? This is, the, this is the crux of our humanity. So when my hair's on fire and your hair's on fire and we're in this uh, crooked thought and we have the discordant thought of the lie because our truth, our nature is not that. Our truth, our nature, is pure stillness, bliss, and joy. So when we're, our hair's on fire and we feel separated or we feel alone, we cannot be this. We cannot be here for God in the fire. But the fire is part of God because the fire is showing you where your crooked thought is. The fire is showing you where you're separated from your divine. The fire is showing you that this might be your belief but right now, you're dis in a discordant idea of it. And so that discordant idea or the hairs on fire or the shame, the blame, the guilt, the gossip, whatever, is uh, your pain, my pain, coming to the surface. And if we don't find a trusted advisor to share it with, it becomes really lonely. And then we beat ourselves up for even being that because we want to be this. And so we're, we're in this like resonance of uh, wanting to be this, you know? So what I had to look at was, what, oh, everybody has a different idea of what a minister is. So did I. I was raised in a Catholic church and I, uh, with priests and then I've had different experiences and, and you, so have you. And so I realized, oh, you gotta be, 
honest about what kind of minister you are, what you love, what brings you joy, and not be ashamed of it and just know that it's enough. It's enough for me and it's enough for you because God has inspired that. I didn't arrive here, I mean, I interviewed, you know, and did all of the steps and so did other people. But spirit, I, one thing you know about me, spirit is and always will be the foundation and it is where I try to put my attention the majority of the time and sometimes I fall short of that mark. And I know you do too. And so we choose to be in a community like this so we can understand that about one another so that there's no dissidence from uh, my purpose is to express the nature of God. Well, that is our truth. We are the nature of God and we are always expressing it. And when our hair's on fire, we have a discordant thought. We're just separated from the idea of our truth. And we need someone to come along and that we trust that we can tell the truth to so that they can see it and help you back to the in, in alignment, to be in alignment with this in everything I do. So this is my desire, but I'm not always there. Uh, the good I seek for myself is what I desire for all people everywhere. I don't know about you, but when I read that, I ask myself, is that true? Is the good I seek for myself the good I seek for all people everywhere? It's a high idea. And Jeff at the installation memorized, Reverend Jeff, each of our principles. He's not a science of minder, but he memorized each of those principles and read them with the deepest resonance and integrity and said we need to move well he doesn't use the word need <laughs> that's my idea that we uh, can choose to move from believing to knowing to being so that when we read this it resonates with us and there's not a discordant energy inside of us that goes God, I feel kind of guilty reading that because I don't know that I did that yesterday and you know what it's okay because we're going to have days where we hit the mark and we're gonna have days where we miss them. And what's the most important thing is for you to know that you are love abound, that we fall down and we get up and we try again. And for me personally, I'd like a hand reached out to help me up instead of one that pushes me down. You know, when I took this job, uh, everyone's like, oh, you're gonna love it, yes! My mentor says to me, girl, you got to get up, and every Thursday you got to write a talk, and you got to be somewhere every Sunday. And she goes, I know you. You don't like to be anywhere every Sunday. And I was like, oh, no, I'm in love with that idea. And she was like, okay. <laughs> that was Reverend Sherl. You've seen her at my installation. <laughs> That's my, invita my imitation of her. And she was like, all right, but you better ask for some Sundays off. She knows me better than I know myself. But there was a call inside of me that wanted to override that part of Tracy, that conditioning. And I saw this, uh, you know, God brings us messages in so many ways. And I saw this Instagram post of this uh, very charismatic mister saying, you know, I didn't want to do this. I was the person in the back of the church that said, I'm on, my, I'm not on, the, do, I'm on the do not call list. I, I don't hear God talking to me. But <laughs> there was this drive in him that was pulling him forward until he became minister and he goes, you know, I'm not asking for your sympathy or your sorrow. That is not this. What I'm asking you for is your understanding that doing this job is really challenging. And, uh, and it takes a lot of commitment and dedication and introspection like you've never believed because you always want to be in alignment with who you are. And sometimes you fall short and you feel guilty. And then, you know, you want to be this mirror. And, oh, that mirror is not always pretty. But I can commit to you that even though I don't want to write a talk every Sunday and be here, that's the truth. Not here. I want to be here. But that it's daunting sometimes when you've taken on other responsibilities. Tom said to me yesterday, oh, yeah, you've had a rough year. And I go, yeah, not just at home. It's just been a rough year. And a lot of things some people think I'm talking about my children. And that is hard at 58. Um, but it's also hard trying to really know yourself in a community that you love and honor and the medicine. So my friend Govin, who came, some of you met him at the Salt Song, he said, let the center be your medicine. Let it show you where you are disconnected. Let it show you where you're not this. And then stop resisting it and, and, and ask God how he can break your heart open and you can face the pain and be with your people and let them be the salve and the medicine. And I love that idea when you're in pain that the person who is agitating you is your medicine. 
The person that's really putting the screws in is your medicine. And it's just their pain rubbing up against yours. And one has to be aware enough to go, ooh, that sounds like pain. Thank you. So I, I, I think when our hair is on fire, we have established that it's a, it's a discordant thought and, that it, and we feel separated from, um, from God or our highest self. But the truth is there's never any separation. That's the lie. So I'm here to remind you and tell you that, you know, I struggle with these things too as a human being. My husband sent me a picture of my glasses sitting on the glass candy jar going, I found them. <laughs> oh, great, Bill. <laughs> That does me a lot of good now, you know. And when I got home, um, you know, Luke was tired, and we were driving here. You know, Luke he does directions better than I do, and we were driving here this morning. And we're driving along. He goes, oh, I want to go to church. He loves being here. He used to want to go to his Nana's. He's like, I want to go to church and see all the people. And uh, he loves it. He's starting to grow into it. It's so exciting. And we're driving, and we're going the right way. Luke thinks we're going the wrong way. So I get, there's not that way, not that way. <laughs> like in the van. And I'm like, Lukey, we're going, no, turn that way. The church is that way. <laughs> and I'm like, Lukey, and Luke's and Bill's like, be quiet. <laughs> I leave him alone. And I'm like, oh, this is how it goes, right? When we want something, we're all screaming, not that way. God is not that way. <laughs> and you're like, yes, it is. <laughs> and like, and we're, we're rubbing up, right? And you're just, it's hilarious. When you pay attention to life, it's always showing you your medicine. And these analogies and funny things really help us to understand. Oh, something, oh, I hope I didn't leave it, but maybe I did. <laughs> maybe I did. Maybe it wasn't meant to be read. Hmm, let me see. And then we'll, we'll wrap up. Ah. So uh, Sue was sharing with us that, you know, Brene Brown really wanted to understand the inner critic. And um, she did some research, and, and this was written by Teddy Roosevelt, so I'll close with this. And then you can leave that picture of Luke screaming in your mind, not that way! <laughs> well, next time you have your hair's on fire, <laughs> your medicine is in your head, your, your divine self going, yo, <laughs> do I have to drop a brick on you? <laughs> And, uh, you know, we can start going, stop going out and start coming home in and really settling down and, and seeking guidance and help. I don't ask for help well. This came from when Govin was uh, sitting at lunch with me and he goes, I know you're disappointed that so-and-so didn't come to the installation. And I go, yeah, well, that was her choice. That's fine. And he's like, yeah, but I see pain. I go, I don't care what you see. That was her choice. Why talk to her about it? Doesn't really matter. And he goes, when are you going to tell the truth? He goes, did your mom like your sister more than you? And I go, my mom didn't go to the <laughs> You know, she's older. And my sister had busy and my brother. And he goes, ah, oh, and there it is. And, and you know, God just sends these things. And, and it, my heart broke open to the truth. You can ask for help. You can tell the truth about how someone has made you feel, even if it's a lie. And you can release them from the responsibility of carrying it. And you could just tell the truth. It opens your heart, it stops the screaming two-year-old in your mind, and it connects you to the divine, and it puts the fire out. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, who face, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strived valiantly, who errs, who comes again and again because there is no effort without error. And shortcoming, there's no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasm and great devotion, who spends, who sends himself in a worthy cause, spe I can't read today, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end triumph of high achievement and who at the worst if he fails at least he failed daring greatly I invite you to remember life is about ups and downs and we don't fail we dare to do greatly and our circumstances are not who we are they're just something that reality has brought to our doorstep 
to show us. There's a screaming two-year-old going, not that way. I love you. <laughs> And we will, uh, we'll let that talk stand as a prayer, but we'll just solidify it with a, with a few words. That prayer is the uh, enhancement of the current reality, wishing to expand in greater and greater ways because your infinite and higher self knows no bounds. Only the personality, the conditioned mind, the brain thinks in limitations. So this teaching, this study helps us to go beyond the mind beyond our physical limitations and tap into the infinite potential and call into play the law. I call that here right now, that each person present, each person that hears as this energy f moves out and flows over into all we meet today. They recognize themselves in you. They have a kind word and you share one back. That this is love that Sandy talked about. This is the moments of connection that we desire as a community. That that is my prayer, that I'm calling that into this moment right now. That it is not absent, it is not limited. It only is expanding and growing because I have requested it to be so. And I ask you to join me in saying, and so it is. <laughs>